Human behavior has always been a mystery. Why do people do what they do? Why do they react one way when we expected something else? How do we learn to understand, connect with, enroll, engage, align with people most effectively? Hi, I'm Christine Cummerford, founder of Smart Tribes Institute, and welcome to our Smart Tribes Crack the Behavior Code podcast. In each episode, you'll learn practical, easy to use tools to better understand and change human behavior. These tools will help your team outperform, outengage, outsell the competition. In other words, to become a smart tribe. Oh, and you'll find these tools super helpful in your personal life too. Let's go. We all want to be included, to belong to the tribe, and our brains are constantly scanning our environment and our interactions to determine if we fit in or not. That's why the like me cognitive bias is so prevalent, because we feel most comfortable, most safety and belonging with people that are similar to us. So who's special and thus included. Now, I'm not going to talk about diversity here because I've done so before a lot and you can refer to other podcasts and blogs on that topic. Um, But instead, I want to urge you to look at your organization and to notice who is being excluded and why. Sometimes it's easiest to first look at who is included or who's in the in-group. Yes, I know, (laughs) just like in high school. So ask yourself, who receives the high-profile assignments or projects? Who receives frequent public praise, is held up as an example of positive performance or attitude? Who receives promotions? Who has lunch with? is invited to play golf with, etc. key leaders. Chances are really good that you thought of a smallish group of people, and I'll bet they all have things in common with the leaders that offer them the benefits I just mentioned. So we're going to call them the in-group. That's the like-me cognitive bias at work. And beneath it, we are subconsciously just trying to simply mitigate risk. Now, we're mitigating risk subconsciously because we're choosing people like us that we think will behave like us, that we think will make decisions like us, etc., thus reducing risk. Everybody else, frankly, is in the out group. Now, on the show uh, page, you're going to see the cognitive bias infographic, and I think that's kind of interesting, so I want you to think about that. You're also going to see an infographic of what exclusion does to your brain. Please take this seriously because it's pretty epic. So your brain has three to four times as much real estate devoted to identifying threats versus identifying opportunities and rewards. Since we are all naturally biased, there's no need to feel ashamed of it. However, there's a very profound business case for becoming more aware of exclusion and how it damages our performance, our emotional engagement, health, happiness, at work, and frankly, in life overall. So let's look at your brain on exclusion. You've been left out of a group before. Think back to junior high or high school or the last round of promotions you weren't part of or the special meeting or project you weren't included in. You get the idea. You know how emotionally painful it feels. Our belonging is threatened when we are ostracized or excluded and we dive deeply into critter state, fight, flight, freeze. Now our brain literally cannot function the way it normally does when it feels safe and is in smart state. So when we're excluded, our brain will release an enzyme that attacks the hippocampus, which is responsible for regulating synapses. As a result, our brain then does the following, reduces the view of field and focuses only on a narrow span of what it must do to survive. Myelin sheathing increases on existing 
neural pathways, and we are less likely to consider or try new solutions. Our working memory is shrunk, so it is not distracted by other ideas, bits of information, or stray thoughts. This means we can't problem solve optimally. Think of students panicked by a pop quiz, right? The information is there, but they cannot access it. We are less creative with less gray mod matter and modified synapses. We experience fewer ideas, thoughts, and information available to bump into each other, so our capacity to create is reduced. We also find increases in the cell density in the amygdala, the area of the brain responsible for fear processing and threat perception, making us more likely to be reactive rather than self-controlled. Also, we're less likely to connect with others. Fight, flight, freeze, or faint is not a sharing type of activity. When the synapses have been modified in this way, we appear grumpy and unsociable. So let's look at how we can bring the out group in. And let me just stress, sometimes the out group is just an individual as well. So what would change if you started including the out group members more? You, well, you'd witness increased safety, belonging, and mattering their behavior. You'd increase collective intelligence, right, which is three people doing the work of five, if you look at our past work on that, because they're all in their smart state, creativity, innovation, connection, safety, belonging, mattering, increased innovation from different diverse points of view, right, easier and more diverse recruiting, a culture of meritocracy that creates empowerment. See, as leaders, we must promote everyone's smart state by not just hiring diverse team members but by including them if you're not like you team members don't feel included they'll end up in critter state fight flight freeze safe or not dead or not right where no one wins so the net net the brain is profoundly impacted when a person feels excluded and the person their performance their emotional engagement and the organization overall suffers as a result. Leaders must raise their awareness to identify who's being excluded and why, and then intentionally include them. The ROI of inclusion is super high. Remember the increased productivity, increased innovation, et cetera, that I mentioned earlier. So to ensure that you're reminded about how exclusion impacts you, our clients have found it super helpful to download, print, and display a copy of our infographic, which you'll find in the show notes, which is what being excluded does to your brain. Thank you so much for joining me today. Let's include what has historically been the outgroup. Thanks for joining me on this episode. Every listen, every share, every review helps others form their own smart tribes where teams are engaged, happy, and optimally performing. Together, you and I can help millions of people crack the behavior code in their organizations, families, and communities. I invite you to take two minutes and head over to smarttribesinstitute.com to discover more about how to form a smart tribe. See you there, and please tell your friends.